Welcome to Around the Verse, Season 3, Episode 4. I am Brian Chambers, Development Director of Foundry 42 Frankfurt. And I'm Dan Truffing. I'm the lead system designer of uh, the Frankfurt office. As many of you know, last week was Gamescom. It was a very, very, very busy week. Um, it's always one of our biggest events of the year. Yeah, outside of CitizenCon, of course. Yes, that is also very busy. Um, members of the dev team from all around the world work tirelessly to pull together to give you the sneak peek of uh, what we showed on the show floor and also at the event. Yeah, we, we got to meet a lot of the, of the old guys, the old backers, and also a lot of new guys that we've never seen before. It's always nice to meet these guys. There was they a were, lot of new people on the show floor that were Yeah, playing. and a lot of them were like in full cosplay with all the gear, all the weapons. And, well, not the actual weapons because the, <laughs> the security would take them away, but all the protection, all the helmets, all the gear. Amazing, amazing stuff. Yeah, I agreed. I met a lot of new new people for the first time. I ran into some old fans, old backers. It was it was really really cool. Highlight of week had to be the live event at the Glory Theater. Uh, that's where Chris Roberts was able to show off SC Alpha 2.5 and 2.6. Uh, it's going to include the release of Star Marine, which I know is anticipated. Um, biggest of all was the gameplay we showed for 3.0. Um, if you didn't get a chance to see it, we've cut together some bits, so take a look. Awesome. As you can see, one of the newest elements that was introduced in that demo was seeing a quest giver for the very first time. Yeah, definitely. While we've been uh, working on integrating uh, NPCs in the, in the baby PU, uh, a mission giver is a completely different level of complexity in, in this game. Uh, let's have a look at how that came along. So with Star Citizen, we want to create a living and breathing universe. And a big part, maybe even the biggest part, is to populate our universe with compelling characters that feel real. And you saw your first glimpse of that with Miles Eckhart, like the shady, ambiguous backroom dealer guy that we showed in the Levski demo for Gamescom. And we want to show you a little bit of how he came to be, from casting um, and then actually shooting uh, on, on the Imaginarium stage, and then going into the technical side with Mike Nagasaka and Jason Cole showing you how he actually came to be as an AI in the demo. Have fun. Hey, how are you? Miles Eckhart. A friend over at Crusader said you've been building quite a rep. Chris runs through everything and edits all the scenes how he wants them to look or how the acting to work. Once that's done, that could come from, say, three or four different takes. But with an editor, he'll use the editor's time code, basically, to make the, create that scene and what he wants. And then from there, that data, that quad cam data and that time code gets sent out and then gets solved. I'm always on the lookout for capable people who don't rattle. If you're interested in picking up some extra work, we should talk. I'll send my details. And then once that data's solved, it comes back to us, but it comes back in pieces per takes. And what we do is we take that data and merge it together to make that one scene work together. While that's getting processed, I pre-visualize the sequence by using pre-existing animation in the editor uh, to get the overall feel. And once I get the motion capture data back, the facial and body, I put everything together and see how everything looks. Hey, how are you? Miles Eckhart. A friend over at Crusader said you've been building quite a rep. I run a 
a security outfit, and I'm always on the lookout for capable people who don't rattle. So the first initial implementation is probably the most important part because this is the first time everything becomes together and we can assess any kind of issues that happens and resolve any kind of motion capture, facial data, environmental, or basically anything that needs to be adjusted. So after the, everything's been polished, I do a lighting, lighting pass. Um, fortunately, we have a good lighter, um, environment lighter, so that I didn't have to do too much lighting, but I still added some few lights from the Mobi glass, um, as well as a little bit of a shadow uh, fill light on the side to give a more of a moody feeling to Eckhart. So after that's been rendered and um, edited, I export the animation into the editor, um, which I hand it over to the level designer or the UI artist to get it triggered at the right place at the right time. So in the Gamescom demo, both Miles Eckhart and the guy that gives you landing permissions on Levski, they were both pre-rendered as flash videos and then those were triggered inside the engine. That's a process that works, but it's kind of old school and we want to actually change that in the future to a process where we actually render picture in picture live in the engine. That's scaling way better with an online universe that has hundreds of these characters. During the Gamescom live demo, Chris Roberts mentioned the engineering difficulties like bringing a ship from space to hangar, transitioning from zone to zone, or having NPCs navigating environments that can move relative to each other. Regarding that last point, we want to show you how we improve the existing multi-layer navigation mesh system to match our requirements for bringing the Star Citizen universe alive. In Gamescom, we can see several examples of the navigation mesh. So this is uh, an example of an actual setup uh, where we can see there are two main uh, areas, like uh, a landing pad with some navigation area and a constellation. So what we actually created is just a setup in which this character is just moving across three spots on the area. And there is another character inside here that will do something very similar. It will move inside three different uh, block points or locations in this area, one here, one this remote computer, and one here. And we'll play some animation. So now that we will jump in game. So this is a, a simple setup I created uh, before with the help of some of the designers uh, in which a spaceship, in our case the constellation we set up before, uh, is spinning on top of a landing pad. Now we are inside, we can see an NPC moving across the uh, two different locations. So this is the first one, he plays just an animation, he arrives to the spot, he plays an animation and he goes to the uh, computer board and he starts to just interact with it. Um, we can look ar around and what we can see is the uh, landing pad. Uh, like just uh, in front of us. And we can see another character that actually move across three different locations and he's trying to look at us later on and he will wave. Um, what you can see is like I can enable the navigation mesh, the back throw, and there, is, there are two different uh, logger grids here and two different zones. One is our spaceship in which uh, during the loading time, uh, the object container will inform the AI uh, to which local navigation uh, mesh are, we are in, uh, which local grid we need to connect to, and which zone uh, we need to connect to. So we can basically allow, uh, here you can see like navigation system idle, that means nothing is actually moving for the eye. So this is uh, really optimized because we can know in advance, uh, based on uh, the physics environment in which we are in, that nothing is actually moving uh, because the zone system takes care of that and the eye can just uh, perform uh, their own action that is pathfinding and move the characters. Um, as you can see, like I can exit the game and I can show you a bit how the setup is. So if I go around, now the navigation mesh will try to recheck the consistency of the different environments uh, to verify that nothing has happened and nothing has changed. Uh, and here is like our constellation and on the bottom we have the landing pad with its own navigation mesh. And if we just look at the, the backdrop, we can see here our volume. 
that is the volume set up in this specific map, but we cannot see any volume on the constellation because this belongs to its own object container and cannot be edited by any level designer that just used the spaceship. Uh, but to edit that one, you need exactly to modify the template of the spaceship. So each navigation mesh more or less um, highlights a specific environment in which the characters can be. Thanks, guys. Thanks to Intel, we also had a booth at Hall 9 on the show floor where people had the opportunity to come up and play the game either yeah. for the first, second, third, fourth time. Yeah, and we were also joined by the Star Citizen uh, Twitch uh, community who were live streaming a sneak peek of the upcoming 2.5 release. Let's have a quick look at how that went on the show floor. So, experience hanging out in the, uh, on the show floor, it was awesome. The amount of um, backers that I met for the first time that I've talked to socially, the amount of uh, new people that came into play. People were excited. At one point, I think the, the queue was up to a three hour wait. And our queue was going outside our booth around the corner and starting to block access to our neighbors. So a wonderful challenge to have because it just shows the interest in the game. Uh, the energy was there, people were digging it, we were having fun. I was part of the floor crew. Uh, we manned the booth and make sure everyone has everything they need to enjoy the game. We, they wanted to meet uh, the developers, so yeah, me and Todd Pappy were all, were all there on site to answer any questions that we uh, the, that the backers uh, had for us. This was my first time at Gamescom and just the sheer amount of people that are there compared to E3 is astounding. And, and we're handing out merchandise left, right and center. We're, we're e explaining our game to every passerby and backers in the community that would come by um, not even wanting to play the game, just wanting to see our presence and, and feel part of uh, what was going on. Good to show people the work that we've been pulling off. All throughout this, we've got uh, Disco Lando, we've got Captain Richard, DJ Knight, Twerk17, Bad News Baron, all streaming live and having fun on the set. It meant that the whole atmosphere was, was live and festive and a lot of people having fun and enjoying themselves. A lot of people have not seen Star Citizen yet here at Gamescom, so, uh, or even live. So yeah, we've been, uh, we've been trying to showcase what Star Citizen has to offer. Amazing to see the amount of backers or the amount of new people coming to see Star Citizen uh, as there have been and then just to see the amount of supporters that are already here that are anxious to see us uh, just feels awesome. This is a fantastic community and I'm glad to be a part of it. Uh, I've been a backer since April 2013 and I've been streaming for a little over two years. So I've met so many people that I've been talking with for years now, so it's been really cool. It's a lot of people have come out and said, hey, I wanted to stop by the Star Citizen booth, say hello, I'm a, a big fan of your stream. The people who work at CIG have been the most passionate people I've ever come across. They really believe in what they're doing, and that's the most inspiring thing for me as a backer. Uh, and then all of the volunteers that worked at the booth, all of those guys were backers. Work those long hours and, and how, much, uh, how much time and effort they spent actually supporting the team as well as the game was, was fantastic. Great guys, always fully ready to talk about the game. Great team and uh, we couldn't have done it without them. They're the ones that are really truly allowing us to be able to create this game, to create this, this world, this universe. And during the floor I was more watching their reactions. And so as something was shown that was kind of blowing them away, I'd look over and they were looking at me and kind of nodding their head and giving me a thumbs up. You know, it was a kind of a direct recognition, a one-on-one -on -one of like, wow, what we saw is pretty cool. Uh, fans weren't the only ones that got in the action at the show. Uh, we also had a press booth where we invited press to get a, a sneak peek at some of the stuff we've been working on. Um, here's an inside look of kind of behind the scenes of our behind the scenes press booth. We come to Gamescom because it's the largest uh, game conference in the whole world. And so uh, that's probably number one. And number two, uh, we have a, a lot of fans here who can attend the conference. And number three, we get to talk directly to the press. Hello, hey. Chris. Hi. Hi. Good, good to see, see you, you again, man. How you doing? Ups from Red Bull. And we spend a lot of time with them. Usually whatever we are going to show to our backers, we also show to the press behind closed doors. The way that works and what that's for is to give the press sort of that up close, kind of personal one-on-one -on -one sort of attention with Chris Roberts. And so Chris sits down, we set up appointments, 
We'll go through the demo. Uh, the press gets a chance to ask him questions, whatever they want. Can you explain how your procedural planet tech works and what it is? They like it when they can get that face-to-face -face contact, especially with someone like Chris. We're going to show like a preview of what we're going to show at our event, uh, which is sort of the first integration of the uh, big procedural planets that we're putting in Star Citizen. That the procedural planet technology is one of the main things, one of the main messages that we're trying to get out. But also getting a chance to show them this, this slice of being able to do all the different things, getting out of your ship, running around a planet, space station, getting back in, flying off to another planet nearby. So I'll just hit um, quantum drive so we can get to our location. You know, you've got the EVA stuff you can go around, and you also have stuff that you can do down on the ground, the FPS stuff, and you can go between all of them seamlessly. So it's sort of just like a first-person universe you can go and do what you want versus stuck to doing one thing. Just being able to do all that uh, sort of, uh, you know, in real time is, uh, is going to be a real special moment for everyone to see. So Levski is this, um, I guess, uh, kind of free township on this moon that was a deserted mining area. And uh, so a whole bunch of people from uh, the UE uh, that wanted to get away with the boot of the UE sort of set up there. So it's sort of like free from the UE oppression. So there's, you know, outlaws, scum villainy, and other people that want to be around there. But we're going to go see it. So this is Port Alasar, which is the place that you sort of start on in the current uh, live Star Citizen, which is one of the space stations. But in 3.0, you'll be able to spawn at the, these multiple uh, starting locations in the star system. What we are showing in the B2B room, in the press room, is what we'll be showing to the backers uh, tonight. And so they're seeing the same thing. We have good relationships with the press. We trust them, they trust us, and uh, we all try to, you know, hold hands and, uh, and all go in it together. So it, it usually works out just fine. There have been a number of articles being published in the last few days about the event and the reaction of the press has been really great. It really honestly has. Uh, we put together some links in the description below if you want to check them out for yourself. And the ATV would not be complete without hearing from the community manager Tyler Whitkin with uh, this week's community updates and MVP. Hey everyone, Tyler Whitkin, Community Manager in the Austin, Texas studio, here to bring you this week's community update. The Anvil Terrapin sale continues, which includes another ship brochure that is definitely worth checking out. Alongside the sale is the usual Q&A sessions. You saw part one on our website released yesterday, and part two will be posted tomorrow. There's a lot of good information in these about the Terrapin. This month's Jump Point is now available to our subscribers. This time, we take a look at the making of Grim Hex Station and the ongoing character head development. Subscribers also received two vault updates this week that showcased a selection of procedurally generated planet shots and an early look at the Anvil Terrapin. Gamescom is now behind us. We had an absolute blast. We encourage you to share the Gamescom demo with your friends and family and let them see just how cool Star Citizen really is. Remember, word of mouth from you, our amazing backers, is what makes this project possible. We want to thank Twerk17, DJ Knight, Bad News Baron, and Captain Richard for entertaining us all live from the show floor booth at Gamescom. In addition, thank you to all of the volunteers who helped us run this event and make sure that things went as smooth as possible. We could not have done it without you. Lastly, it's time for our MVP award. A huge congratulations to Algared, Brett W., and Gentle Jez for holding this year's Crux Cup. For those of you who are not familiar, this is an annual in-game racing tournament organized and hosted by the community, loaded with epic prizes. So, congratulations again. You all are this week's MVPs. Back to you guys. Thanks, Tyler. Uh, maybe next time you and I can join the race. What do you think? You'll have to step up your game. I'll see what I can do. Anyways, uh, that's it for this week. Uh, now the game's comes ended. The team is back in the trenches to get SC Alpha 2.5 out the door. Also working towards 3.0.
also working on Squadron 42. Uh, we'd like to thank all of our subscribers that allow us to bring this extra content to you on a regular basis. Um, please go to robertspaceindustries.com. You can get info on future news, future events that we have. Uh, you can also purchase merchandise there. I've heard, I don't know exactly when yet, but I've heard soon we will have the Squadron 42 hoodies yeah, up there. Sure. And those are pretty cool. We also like to give a shout out to our Star Citizen community who will be attending uh, Insomnia at the NEC in Birmingham this Saturday. Uh, some of our team from the UK office uh, will be meeting Board Gamer at uh, 4 p.m. in the bar. The first 58 attendees will also get a special surprise. I wonder what it is. Well, it's a surprise. That's what surprises are for. Yeah, exactly. Uh, please feel free to join us this Friday at 4 p.m. local German time. Uh, for Reverse the Verse, where we will be taking questions live, uh, myself and a few others, based off of this week's episode. And, as always, we will see you next time Around, around the Verse. verse. watching so if you want to keep up with the latest and greatest in the Star Citizen and Squadron 42's development please follow us on our social media channels see you soon